Hello everybody. I'm getting on again because I'm hungry. Well, and this is a great dish. Okay, so this is kind of a universal filling that I have used for many things. My favorite application of this is to make little wontons in um, mini muffin tins because it's easy, because they're delicious, it's a vegetarian recipe and it's super low calorie. Okay, plus they're beautiful, they're so pretty. So let me run you through this recipe quick. Okay, so it's officially called vegetable wontons. Now, like I said, this filling is very universal, so you could use it for a many, many different reasons in many different applications. But it starts out with cabbage, obviously. It's like an egg roll filling, okay? So cabbage, we're gonna use two cups of cabbage. I use the coleslaw mix, like I've talked about before. It's got the red cabbage in there and some carrots. So you just wanna finely dice that stuff up, okay? So we have finely diced up our cabbage. Now it also calls for about a medium carrot. And I peeled this and then diced that up to a really nice fine dice too. You have to keep that in mind. If we're talking about a mini muffin tin, this stuff needs to be small because to get it to fit in there alone is a little, can be challenging if you don't have your filling diced up fine enough, okay? Next thing, mushrooms. Now it calls for button mushrooms, three of them, large ones, okay? Calls for large ones. And if you know, and I'm sure you do, vegetables, when you cook them, they shrink up because they're mostly water, right? They're a big portion of the content is water. So as soon as you cook them, they are going to shrink up. So um, this is gonna look like a lot and you really stuff these <laughs> shells full, but that's exactly what we want. So again, we are dicing up mushrooms. Now the ones that I got were called baby Bella mushrooms. So they're a little bit darker. Um, just be sure that you've cleaned them with a paper towel, not wet, okay, because they will absorb water like a sponge and you don't want that going on. So here, and again, it's kind of crazy how much mushroom content they really have in there when you dice them up. So there's our mushrooms. The next thing, I'm gonna make it a mess here, green onions, okay? So it just says a bunch or a stem of green onions. So we're just gonna dice that up as well and then um, add that to our mix. And of course, I think green onions are so versatile and I've talked about this before. I think they're a wonderful thing to have around because they do give nice flavor, plus they give beautiful color. And for a garnish on anything, I think it's a must have, it's a must have. Plus they're super inexpensive all the time, right? So this calls for just the green parts. Now I've got a little bit of white part in here, but as you know, the stem of the green mushrooms, you don't want that part. So there's definitely a division where it's like a light green and then it's a white. You don't want the white. Does that make sense? Okay, so let's put our onion in here. Now the next thing is a clove of garlic, okay? So this you smash and that makes it really easy to peel, which is what we want, easy to peel. And then we're just going to mince that. So I like garlic. I like garlic a lot. So I have a tendency to go a little overboard on the garlic. I used a large clove. It does call for a large clove just because there's so much filling, but I wouldn't hesitate to use more than one if you are a garlic fan. Okay, does that make sense? Now the next thing is ginger, and I'm gonna grab that out of the freezer here. I store it in the freezer. So you buy it at the grocery store in the fresh produce department, okay? You peel the whole thing, peel the whole thing, and then you just, you know, it has kind of lobs on it. And when you dice those off then, when it calls for an inch of ginger, it makes it really easy to do that. Ta-da. And then we're just gonna dice that up as well. Now I diced a little bit earlier. It's not gonna be enough, so we're gonna do the rest of that quick fashion here. And it, it does make it easy. Now you can also run this on a microplane if you have to use it really, <laughs> Fine, but this a dice is fine so I'm going to go ahead and dice it up 
And again, when it's frozen, it makes it so much easier to work with because it is kind of a stringy type vegetable or herb or I'm, I'm not even sure what it is, right? Spice. So it is harder to work with when it's not frozen just because of the stringiness of this tuber. So there's our dice and we will add that. Now, of course, ginger gives such a unique flavor, right? It's kind of a warming flavor and I know that's used medicinally too, ginger, but it's just a wonderful flavor. It always reminds me of molasses cookies, <laughs> but when you get it mixed in with all of these veggies and so forth, that is not the case at all. It's wonderful. Okay, so there's our ginger. And then we need to season it up with some salt and pepper. And that's about it, you guys. So again, I like to fresh grind. I think when you do that, you just get the bonus of freshness. And it's all about freshness, right? Have we used anything in here that is a food made from a food? Not a fan of that kind of stuff. So you probably figured that out by now. I like to make my food from food, not by my food that's made into food. So these are raw ingredients, right? Now look at how nice that is. It's so pretty. <laughs> it really is pretty. The colors are amazing. And you can smell it. You can definitely smell the ar aromatic ginger um, and the onion too you pick up on and the little bit of garlic in there for sure. Garlic is really more of a prevalent flavor in Asian cooking than I realized. But when I started making dishes, they almost always have garlic in them. Okay, so there's our filling. Now again, we're doing wontons. I didn't have wonton wrappers <laughs> in my household, but I have egg roll wrappers. So basically egg roll wrappers are just bigger. That's the only difference. So I'm just cutting each one of these sheets into four. And then you've got the same difference, okay? So this would be a wonton wrapper. Now the way this recipe actually states, you would put about a tablespoon of your filling and you would, you know, pull them up and make a wonton, right? Like this. Use water, seal them, and then it's to boil them or deep fry them or whatever. I'm not doing that. I'm doing it a little bit easier. So at least for me, that I, I don't mind putsy, but that's, that's even too putsy for me. So again, I use a mini muffin tin and then you just put these in here and of course you fill up your whole thing with these wontons, right? Okay, and then we are going to put the filling in them and be sure you've got that really blended well. Oh yeah, blend it well because it's so pretty. You don't want to miss out on any of that. Okay, so fill them well because they're gonna shrink, the filling's gonna shrink up too. And then we're just gonna bake them. Now the beauty of this is they store well. Even after you've baked them, you can freeze them or you can freeze them just like this, which is exactly what I'm gonna do because I'm actually gonna be serving these, not today, <laughs> for an event. So that way I can take them out of the freezer and throw them right in the oven and then they're fresh. Now they're also good at room temperature. It really doesn't make any difference. And you just, it just takes a few minutes to brown those things up and they come out looking like this. And they come out super easy. <laughs> Look at that. You don't have to like spray your pans or anything. They are kind of dusted with, I don't know, a fine milled starch of some type is what it looks like. So then when you serve them, now I'd serve them on a serving platter. But again, I'm kind of all about eating with your eyes first. So you put some green onions and scatter those on your tray and then just take some either sweet and sour or like Thai chili sauce. I'm out of that, which is kind of surprising, but that's delicious. And just drizzle it over your platter. They're wonderful. Hot, room temperature, whatever you want to do. Vegetarian small finger food that really didn't take you very long to make. And again, I talked about how I would use this filling for other applications. This is wonderful just as a stir fry too, this combination. You would not have to chop it up this finely, obviously, but use it for stir, stir fry, use it for egg roll filling. You can use it for a number of things. So be creative, mix up that recipe as you like. It really is delicious. So I hope you give these a try. 
If you have any questions, let me know. And of course, if you have any recipes to share with me, I'd really appreciate that, okay? <laughs> have a great day. I hope you have something fun planned on your agenda. And I hope you have something wonderful planned on your menu. All right, thanks for tuning in.